So, you want to make this cool motion graphic intro with like a little slicey slice thing cuz you don't you don't want to you don't want to do the slice cuz the slices are dangerous. Let me get this clear, okay? So the slices are dangerous, but you still want to make this intro anyway. Make sure you put on protective armor. Hey guys, one back that's by Kai. I'm Kai and today we are back in GIMP once again, first, before we head into Blender, we need to make something in GIMP real quick. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to add, open a new image here. This new image is just going to be, we're going to just do a square, so it's going to be 2,000 by 2,000. And we need to create some slices before we go into Blender. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab our little lasso tool here. And this works in GIMP, it works in Photoshop, it works in whatever image photo manipulation program you're using. I'm going to go ahead and just real quick, just use the lasso tool and just draw... A slice like this just draw it down with my mouse and just back up and then connect them like that then an enter now I'm gonna hold down shift do the same thing again and then just all the way down right and then back up connect it hit enter and one more time we're gonna do the same thing all the way down back up and close it off and enter there we go uh, now we're gonna actually I don't like that one let me do it again <laughs> let me do that again I don't like the way that one looked at the bottom. All right, we're going to do that again. Uh, there we go. Enter. Now, we got three little slices, but they're just selected right now. We don't have anything in them. So I'm going to go to the fill uh, bucket here and change this color to white and then just click once inside of there. Now we got three little filly full boys. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to select and go to none and then hit this little move tool and then move this kind of in the center right there. Uh, there we go. And then we can go layer, crop to content, and then yeah. So... We're, we're pretty much done now. That's it. Now we got to go up, go up to file and hit export, then export this to our pictures folder, and then we'll just import it into Blender in a second. All right, so we're here in Blender now, and I've exported our image. I'm going to go ahead and go up to, uh, actually, we're going to go to file first, and then, actually, I'm sorry, edit. We're going to go up to edit, then preferences, then we're going to go and scroll on down here until we find what we're looking for, which is add-ons, and then we're going to go and search up images as planes because we need that enabled. Check that on, and then down here, we're going to go ahead and hit uh, save preferences, and then we're just going to close that out. Now, we can get rid of default cube. I'm sorry. Delete. And we're also going to get rid of our lamp because we don't need that. And I'm going to hit shift A on our keyboard, shift A. And then we're going to go down to image and then images as planes. So you can see in Blender 2.81, what they do now is they open up this little box, which is pretty cool. Um, instead of having the whole thing be all over the place. Now they have this little box that opens up and you can just uh, go into your folder like this. I'm going to grab our slices and make sure that uh, use alpha is checked because we need that. Very important. And I'm also going to go ahead and uh, hit import images as planes. Now. We can do that, and you can see it's now imported that image. If we go to render viewport shading, you can see that you can see you can see that we have our little slices there. Kind of difficult to see, but you can see them there. If I go ahead and turn my uh, world properties to solid black, like we need it, uh, and then go ahead and go to the material tab, and then go ahead and scroll on scroll on up here and change this to emission. Now, if we actually let's not do that. If we change it to emission, it's going to mess up our transparent value. So let's go ahead and just split our window into two. So I'm going to drag open from the left hand side. And change this to the shader editor here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab, grab our uh, emission shader here. We're gonna grab an emission shader. Uh, so Shift A emission, and then we're gonna plug that into the base color, and then and we're gonna oop no, and then we're gonna plug that into the surface. Now once we've done that, we gotta go ahead and hit Shift A, and then add in a mix node right, right here. So add in a mix shader, plop that right in between the emission and the uh, the material output. Then plug this principal BSDF in between. Oh well, not in between, but into the the bottom of the shader here. And now if we were to go ahead and hit Shift A and add in like Suzanne behind here, move it back, hit S to scale it down, just so we can see behind it. There we go. We should be able to just add an emission shader real quick, just so we can see it. And we should be good. So yeah, we can see behind this now. But you can see we have a kind of like a little overlay. So we still can't fully see through it. So let me grab this. And then we'll bump up the strength of the emission value to maybe 5. Do 5. And then down here, we're actually going to go ahead, need to go ahead and uh, and select uh, uh, alpha uh, hash, I believe it is. Alpha alpha clip. Alpha clip. And then now you see we, it's refreshed now. So now it looks good. We just have to refresh that. So if that happens, just make sure you go to blend mode. Change it to alpha clip, and now you can see if we scroll in real, qu real close, you can see we have a little bit of a black edge there, like where it's like cut out the 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 stuff, which is not what we need. So I'm gonna turn the clip threshold up, and that's just gonna get rid of that. There we go. So about maybe seven looks good. Uh, maybe we'll even go s be safe and just go for eight. Yeah, so eight looks good. Now we have fully transparent little slices, and we can get rid of Suzanne. That was just a test. All right, now 
If I hit zero on my on my numpad, I can go to the camera's view. If I select the camera and then hit Alt G and Alt R to clear the rotation and the location, I'm gonna hit R X 90 on our numpad to rotate the camera 90 degrees on the X axis. Left click to confirm that, and then I'm gonna hit G and double tap Z to move this camera backwards. Now we can't see anything because it's solid black and our uh, slices are, are facing the wrong dire direction. So. I'm gonna go back to uh, I'm gonna go material shading right now. So I'm up to here, up here material uh, output. Then I'm gonna close this because we don't need that anymore. Just drag that open, drag that close. Sorry, and then R Z with our slices 90, and then the negative sign to flip it. There we go. So now if I hit zero, we can go back to the camera's view. Now this is super small, so I'm gonna move our camera back. So select our camera, double tap. Uh, we'll hit G and then double tap Z to move it forward, and then just kind of move your mouse up a little bit. Now we got some slices, which looks pretty good, nice, which looks pretty nice. I'm liking it. If we go ahead and hit Shift A, we can add in some text finally. So hit text right there, and then RX 90. Now we got some text. Boom! I'm excited. Uh, and now we can see we have this little weird glitching. We need to move the text backwards a little bit. So G Y, just move it back just a little bit, just so it's behind the slices. Um, now, if we go to the text tab over here on the right hand side, boom, and we go down to uh, alignment and then horizontal, we can change this from left to center. And now we're gonna go to font. And this is a little font folder right here to open up our fonts folder. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a font, which I found my font folder, which is right here. I'm going to open up a font called Mad Joe. And we're going to use that today because it looks pretty good. And I'm just going to go ahead and click that and uh, hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm just going to change what this says because I don't want to do text today. I want to do like feral. That looks pretty cool, right? So we'll do something like feral. And now you can see it's kind of off center. So if I move the slices out the way, you can see the center of this, the pivot point is down here, which is not good. So we need to fix that. I'm going to fix that by selecting our text and scrolling all the way down here to offset Y and then just hitting that down a couple times. So maybe instead of 0.3, we'll do 0 0.25, 0 0.27. Yeah, 0 0.27 looks pretty good. We'll do that. And now we have our words feral and we have our little, 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 little slices. I'm going to it has to scale the slices up a little bit some more. All right, now a little bit of animation time. I want to open up our timeline, go out of this, uh, go to the scene tab here, and change the frame rate to 60. And then we're gonna go back to the material tab, select our text, and then add a new material. So we're just gonna hit this little drop down and and grab this material that says material right here. Um, and then I'm gonna just change this base color to like red, like a red. Actually, I want to uh, change this from principal to emission first, and then we'll change it to a red. There we go. So a little bit of a reddish pink. You don't want to do like solid red like that because that doesn't look, well, actually it does look kind of good but for this. But typically you want to go for a, a softer color like that as opposed to that. So um, it's really up to you, but I, I do like the softer colors better. It looks, it looks better on your eyes and it's just much easier to look at. So uh, now with our rendered viewport shading, you can see we have all this stuff in place. I'm going to turn my overlays off, hit that little button. Now you can see we have everything in place. Um, I want to do one more thing though. So if we go back to our first tab here and go to color management, we need to turn this from filmic to standard because the color is off right now. Um, there we go. So it looks much, much better, much brighter, much, much more vibrant, which is what I'm going for. And I also want to go ahead and check bloom. And then we'll open up Bloom here and turn the knee down a little bit. Well, turn the knee up a little bit, rather. And turn the radius down a little tiny bit. Turn the threshold up a little bit. And then turn the intensity down just a little tiny bit. So that looks pretty good. I like it. Looks good. Now for the animation, like I said. So I want the world words feral to kind of come in after the slices happen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to maybe about frame um, 30. Frame 30. Um, and we're going to go ahead and hit I with our text selected, with our text selected, hit I, scaling, then on frame 31, hit the arrow key over by one, and then we're going to hit I, scaling. Now, what we, what we did is we added two keyframes, but they don't do anything because we didn't change the scaling because we didn't scale, scale anything yet. So, I'm going to go back to 30, the frame, the 30th frame, and then hit S on our keyboard, and then zero on our numpad, and then left click to confirm that, and then hit I, scaling. Now, what we've done is the keyframe right before this keyframe, um, this one's zero scale, and then this one's 100%. So it's going to like pop into frame, which is what I want. So that's nice. But I don't really want it to pop 100%. So I'm going to grab the 31 keyframe and hit G to move it over by like two frames. So it goes like this. So boom, 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 boom. There we go. So if I play this, it's really quick. You can see really quick, but it looks pretty good. All right. Now for the rest of the stuff, I'm going to turn viewport denoising off, by the way, in the scene tab here. So yeah. That, that as well. Um, with the slices, 